Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act so bad. Hat on, suit on, suit on. Looking like the tap of dawn. Giving a microphone. Stress like a million bucks. Bumming things in its cups. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Listening to me. Uh huh. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to the voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Man, oh man, got a radio show. Yeah, I do. God's so big to me, man. I just have to tell you about it. I can't help it. It's rather obvious to me how big, how good God is. He's absolutely tremendous. He's off the chain. He on one. He be clowning. He be just showing out. Man, I'm just over here just on the receiving end. You know, uh, if you out there, start your mission today. Start your mission today. What are you waiting for? Why do we as people delay what we want or delay the process to begin what we want, our hopes, our dreams, our desires. Why won't you start your mission today? Why don't we all decide together that just individually, look, you listening, you got something that you've been dreaming about. You got an ambition of yours that's not yet fulfilled. You got goals you haven't accomplished yet. Everybody has them. Everybody's got them. Everybody's got something that's that's on the table that they haven't yet attacked yet. What are you waiting for? Start your mission today. Stop the procrastination now. The procrastination is only hurting you, yourself. If you got a goal, an aspiration, a dream, and you fall off track momentarily, you can get back to that. Because God knows where you left off. Now, you may have to accomplish a few more things since you stopped for a long period of time, but God know where you left off. You can get back on track. I Look, man, this dream of being on TV since I was a kid, it got off track now. It got off track. I just kept it as one of the dreams. And in some real dark moments when it looked like it wasn't going to happen, all I was hanging on to was just the hope that one day it could. But that's what faith is really about. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. But faith gives you the confidence to keep hoping, man. Sometimes it just keep hope alive. Sometimes, you heard Jesse Jackson say it, just keep hope alive. Sometimes, man, it's just the hope. I was hanging on the hope. And I'm talking about when it got real ugly and funky out there for me. When it looked like I wasn't going to ever make it. And all of the facts was in and everything pointed in the direction you're not going to make it. You done really messed up this time. Then I sat there and I just hung on to the hope. 
But man, that's what I'm saying. If you got a dream or an aspiration, a vision or something, when you fall off track and you want to go get back in line, God holds your place. See, he held on to that for me. He knew I was off track and out of line. But he said, okay, here's where we stopped. You want to be on TV. Now, when you get it together and you quit tripping and you come and you turn to me, I'm going to hold your place, put you back in line, then we're going to finish the journey. That took me a lot longer to get here than I wanted to, but then it was necessary because I needed all of them mishaps to happen to me along the way. So when I got on the radio one day, which I did not see coming, Steve Harvey got a radio show, y'all. That's why I say it every day. See, because of this radio show that I didn't see coming, now I have stories to tell. I got experiences to share. And I can tell you about me better than I can tell you about anybody. And I done been through enough where it's relatable, where enough people can go, man, that happened to me. Appreciate you saying that. That's what it was for. See, I get it now. See, at the time, though, I didn't, I didn't like what was happening to me. At the time, I was really in total disagreement with God on a lot of stuff he was pulling off on me. But in essence, I was really pulling it off on myself. But through his grace and mercy, he kept me through all of my mistakes, all my bad decisions, all my miscalculations, all my misfires, all the times I knowingly stepped out there and did wrong. He forgave me. He said, because, man, if you ever come to me, I have a plan for you that is going to be far and above. It will supersede everything you've ever dreamed of. That's what I did. I just got sick of me, good and sick of me, and I turned it over to God, and then God started working, and here I am today. Now, is he through with me yet? Nope. Have I arrived yet? Nope. But guess what? The journey is cool. You know, it's like I was talking to this young brother the other day, about comedy. He's a really good stand-up, you know, this young dude is really good. He said, man, what is this I feel every night before I go on stage? I don't know what it is. I just want it off me. I said, sir, listen to me, young, young dude. This thing that climbs on my back every night before I go on stage, I don't know what it is. It's got something to do with pressure. It's got something to do with anticipation. It's got a whole lot to do with the fear of falling. He said, what you mean by that? I said, every night I walk out on stage, it's like I'm about to go and step off a cliff. I said, it's a sickening feeling. He said, man, but you do so well. I said, that's because the parachute opens. I said, but I want you to understand something. When I first walk out there, it's just stepping off the cliff. Now, these jokes provide a parachute, which slows my descent when I jump off the cliff, and I turn it into a glide. And then I take the audience this way and I swing them back over to that way. We might swing out to the Colorado Rockies. We may go down to Miami with this joke. We may take it on out to L.A. And I just swing back and forth till I land softly. The crowd cheers. The night is over with. I said, but it's been too many nights, though, when I walked off that cliff and I pulled the cord and the parachute didn't open. I said, now I'm just free falling out there for 30 minutes. Ain't no jokes working, ain't the parachute didn't open. I said, so see, that's what it's like for me. And then you know what I found out? If you done walked off the cliff in life and you ain't got no God in your life, it's like not having a parachute. You step off the cliff and you just free falling. Now see, we all, now that fall gets you closer to the grave, right? See, we all heading to the grave from the moment we born. But the cool thing about a relationship with God is, when you step off the cliff and you got God, he a parachute. You still going down, but it's a nice ride. And God just helps your, your descent appear more like a rise and more like a euphoric fall instead of not having no God in your life and you just walking off that cliff every day, free falling, ain't got no cord, you steady pulling. Ah! You hollering the whole way because you messed around with yourself and ain't let God come into your life and provide a parachute for you. I would rather have a parachute since I got to jump every day than to not have one. God has been like a parachute for me. Ask me why, where that came from, I can't tell you. But like I always say, most good things that happen in my life that I can't explain, it's usually him. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Got it on my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We up in the morning, either 5 or 6 a.m., depending on where you live. We on right now. We on fire. Oh, Lord. Steve Harvey Morning Show. Shirley Strawberry. Good morning, Steve. I ain't, I ain't got no rhyme or reason. I don't, I don't know what I be doing. Where Carla Pharrell. With your singing self. For good that Monday morning. Damn. Junior. Morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. <laughs> the maker of hotter than a mofo. Peanuts. <laughs> Come on, boy. Good morning, Steve. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> king of pranks, <laughs> never you, Tommy. Top, top, top of the Monday morning. Monday, man. You could have played a little underneath me, Jake. I didn't know, I didn't know. I'm, I'm sorry, man. I'm I like sorry. I, I didn't know. You know I didn't it offend. sound like the movie Sounder. That's what it sounded like. I didn't, like, I so. I didn't want to yeah. offend and step on, you know, so I, didn't, I just left it Sounder, off. was that the movie with the dog in it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, Lee Tyson. Tommy, who would you have played in that movie? Okay. Uh, uh, the boy. Uh, yeah, oh, I know that. Uh, the boy. Oh, <laughs> Yo, I know that. Here we go. You can't pick nobody no. grown. <laughs> yeah. You would have played, played, played the boy or the husband, either one. No, the boy. That, that person. The boy. That, 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 little boy on top of that. He could have played both parts. He played he, he's that good. No, he's that no. talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he might be that talented, but he ain't that tall. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, man. He shoot sorry. it in green screen. You won't even know. Sounder was, was, was good. Shirley, yes. oh, Shirley what's your favorite up. movie of all time? Oh, my God. That's such a hard one. Mm, no, it's I not. So uh, Carla, Carla, what's your favorite movie? It is hard oh, for me. It's a hard I love question, movies. man. Yeah, I love Top movies. Everybody, three. I just had one. Just one favorite movie. Favorite of all time. All time. Jay, what's your favorite movie? The sweatiest man? movie of all time. The absolute <laughs> sweatiest movie of all time. <laughs> a Time to Kill. Samuel oh, yes. Oh, Samuel L. Went yeah. Went through that yeah, whole Grisham. damn movie, man. Mm-hmm. I read Grisham that book. To nowhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tommy, Me favorite too. movie. Grisham. I'm going color purple. Color purple. Uh-huh. I'm going color purple. Uh-huh. What's your yeah. Steve? Oh, I'm brave hard. Oh, purple. yeah, that's oh, right. Sit and be mad the whole damn movie. <laughs> 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 it's just because it's classic. That's so hard. Brave yeah. hard is great. Call them nights. Going there. Oh, that's a good one. Watched that a hundred times. Like so <laughs> many. Movies. Throw that bud yeah, me the too. Me too. It's hard to part. pick. Yeah. All right, coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, <laughs> uh, get ready for Steve's segment, Ask the CLO. It's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time for Steve Harvey uh, to help someone. As the CLO, the Chief Love Officer, the CLO, as Tommy calls him. Uh, Yeah, if you have a question for our CLO, please submit your questions to steveharveyfm.com. Are you ready, CLO? Yeah. Come on, Chief Love Officer. This one is from Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine is an online listener. Uh, She says, I'm a 39-year-old married woman, and I have been married three years. When my husband gets on the phone or around other people, I find out things he doesn't like about me. He told his brother that he can't get a decent breakfast to save his life. Everything is overcooked. He chuckled as if he were joking. Then he was on the phone with his best friend and said that I snore like a bear. So it's like sleeping with one. He chuckled after saying that too. I asked him, why does he do this? And he said, I'm too sensitive. Do you think that it's how he really feels, or are they just well, jokes? Okay, well, they could be jokes, but behind, but in, 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 order, in order for a joke to be effective, it's got to have 90% truth in it for me. Mm. So now, let's just go on and find out something. You can't cook. 
<laughs> you cannot cook. He probably the man probably can't get a decent breakfast. Mm. You know everything is overcooked. You probably know that though. And mm. so you know that's something you could fix. Now snowing, you might have to go see about that. But you probably snore too. You know. But then see, he ain't perfect. Mm-hmm. So what you need to do is let him overhear you on the phone. You ain't got to be on the phone with nobody. Just when you see him coming, just hold your phone up to your ear and go down the list of complaints and see how he like it. Then mm-hmm. if he don't like you talking to him, talk you talking about him, he may stop talking about you. Mm-hmm. Or is mm-hmm. he just too sensitive, like he accused her? Hello, of he probably is too sensitive. <laughs> mm. All right. Thank you, CLO. Chastity in Oklahoma says, I'm in my late 20s and I'm active on social media because I'm a personal trainer. I've been in a decent relationship for close to a year and I've managed to keep my love life and professional life separate. My boyfriend feels like I should post pictures of us working out together or celebrating my birthday or holidays together. He posts pictures of us all the time and that's fine, but I use my social media to promote my business. Maybe if we get married, I will post us, but not now. He said he feels like I have something to hide. I told him he's insecure. That did not go over well. How can we come to some kind of agreement on this? Well, it's nothing to have an agreement about. If you're using your social media for business, he should understand that. It would be different if you was posting other social things on it and not him. But you you just use it for business. Now, if you're putting other stuff on there that he has a gripe or or, a real complaint. But if you're only doing it for training businesses to promote your workouts and all like that, you ain't got to put you and him on there. You know, he'll be all right. It's just for business. Mm. And I don't know if you're going to be round no how. That's why I ain't putting you on here. (laughs) Uh-uh. She just uh-uh. she just said she, it. she said just said it. if yeah. you was married. If we get married, yeah, yeah you know, I will by putting it. you on here blocking no action. I might have coming my way if you trip. Mm-hmm. Cause sound like you trying to get out right now. Yeah, I mean, he says he thinks she has something to hide. She said, "Well, you're insecure." You. She don't want nobody to know nothing about y'all. Mm. You want her to be just yours? Put a ring on it. Other than that, dog, what you talking about? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. We're moving on, Steve. Anonymous in St. Louis says, I've been with my love, with the love of my life for 18 years, and we have three children. Our lives got busy when we started having children, and a wedding wasn't a priority. Now it's 18 years later, and I want a wedding. Last year, I got an engagement ring to keep me quiet. I keep pressing him to set a date, but he's not very motivated to do so. I can't blame him for not making me a priority now because I've accepted it for years. I have a happy home life and we're married in every way, except legally, should I let it go? No, no. You want to be married, you should get married. Mm -hmm. Period. It's simple. Y'all living together, y'all got a house and a home. It's just a date. You can go to the courthouse. You got three kids, y'all a family. Go on and get married. He ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Right. And if something happens, she's, mm-mm. Well, I just had a pastor there tomorrow evening. When he come in from work, y'all just going to get married right there. She can set the date. Don't wait on him. Mm-hmm. Just set it. Okay, mm-hmm. we're marrying this day, right? Hell yeah, Steve? you already got the uh-huh. ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, 18 years? Wow. Three oh, children. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> what? Say, Come on, on, bitter man. What? Hold on. I've been riding it this long. You can take it on. <laughs> <laughs> That's your bitter man response. <laughs> Listen to the CLO, okay? A <laughs> <I> mess. <laughs> I wonder why all of a sudden she wants a wedding after 18 years. She's not all of a sudden, Shirley. She's always wanted. Well, no, she said initially a wedding wasn't a priority. Okay. But now, after 18 years, she wants a wedding. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, Steve, so Tommy has a question. All right, go ahead. All right, all right. This this is for everybody. Put these four in a cage. Who come out alive? Lion, bear, gorilla, and python. Oh, the lion. Yeah, I'm a Leo. I'm going with the lion. Not, not a lion. Okay. King of the jungle, dog. Gorilla. Mm-hmm. I'm going with no. the gorilla. You don't think that gorilla can handle that lion? Yeah. Hell no. 
Facts. I'm going with the lion all day. Hell I think, no. that, I think that gorilla cold. Man. I'm going gorilla. I'm going gorilla too. No. Mm. I saw I'm gonna King go with Kong. that lion, man. No. I don't think y'all understand why they. You, do you understand why they call him King of the Jungle? Yeah. He the king, but he gorillas, jump. you know, he, jump. he don't. But these don't two mess don't. With gorillas. Gorilla yeah, these two don't cross right paths. Yeah. They don't cross paths. Yeah. That, that's why. Yeah, gorillas <laughs> like go ahead on now. I'm telling you, go ahead on. You must ain't heard signifying monkey. Yeah, go ahead on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, guys. Church complaints with Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann is here with today's national news. And she's going to give us a recap on the March on Washington 2020 as thousands gathered at the National Mall and the Lincoln Memorial as protesters marched this past Friday for change. Also in entertainment news, this is a sad, sad, sad story right here. We are all shocked and just devastated by the passing of Chadwick Boseman, uh, our very own superhero. It was due to colon cancer. He was 43 years old. We'll talk more about these stories at the top of the hour. But of course, today is Monday, and we're going to try and make you smile right now with Reverend Motown and Deacon Def Jam and today's church complaints. Good. All right. Go. Come on. Yeah. Well, introduce oh. us first. Oh, I, I am Reverend Motown. And I am <clears throat> Deacon Def Jam. We are here uh, on behalf of the JP JJ. Mm, that's the jackpot joint of Jerusalem. Ching ching. Call it daddy. Glory for the people. Count all that. No mm-hmm. way for the people. Hallelujah. Listen, we are <laughs> on this uh, blessed your Monday morning. Mm. Uh, we take a time out to refutudicate mm. and, Re- and and Re- go Re- over. Uh, I said that right. Back no, up and right. do that one again. Refer- uh, right. We come over here to refutudicate mm. <laughs> and right. junctionate mm. the problem, mate. Yeah. Of the congregate. Wow. In other words, the church is complaining. Come on, Deacon. All right. Uh, here, we're going to start this out. The women with facial hair. Uh, the members would like to know if it would be okay for them to just put a, a, a happy face uh, instead of zooming in the service. The women, we, they getting tired of seeing the ladies with the facial hair. Uh, uh, Pastor, your call. No, I've uh, decided to uh, uh, have a solution for that. All right. I'm bringing oh. back magic shave. <laughs> no, it's too stinky, Pastor. It really is. Well, we zooming. You ain't going to be able to smell it. <laughs> Hello. Good Problem point. solved. Thank you. Ain't God good. <laughs> all the time. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Magic shave to all the ladies. Yeah, I right. think of this right off the top of my head. I don't <laughs> know if you recognize it or uh, Kamakita, the Kamakuta skill set. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, doctor. All right. Uh, they're saying that some of your sermons are starting to be repetitive, meaning you preaching uh-huh. the same thing, whether it's uh-huh. Old or the New Testament. Uh, we, they saying they already heard it. Would it be okay to just send the money and skip the Zoom since they didn't hear it already? Oh, uh, no. The Bible says faith comes from hearing, uh-huh. not from having heard. The fact that you already heard it, obviously you needed to hear it again. Mm. <laughs> so here I'm is. Okay, but, here I'm is. <laughs> but, but they would like to get some new sermons, though, Pam. Uh, Ain't no new sermons when you go in hell. Uh, what you want me to change the name of hell? Purgatory. Uh, all right. Uh, the uh, White House. Come on, preach, preach. Uh, 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 <laughs> kept it 100, huh? Yeah. All, <laughs> all day here. They go, go. Come on, D. <laughs> all right. Uh, they say uh, you keep asking for money, but we don't know how much you taking up since we not at the church <laughs> counting the money as it comes in. Uh, and we don't get receipts, so uh, we want to change this operation. We'd like to know how much money you've taken so far. That ain't in the Bible. <laughs> Your job is to give thine 10%. Mm. 
year. Now, I didn't ask you what your 10% was. You can't ask me what it is that you give to me. But as, as members of the church, we have a right to know huh? how much money. Uh, well, I, I have that. a right to know. Well, we all should have a right to know what your 10% is. What your 10% was this week, D? Uh, Excuse me? <laughs> what your 10% was this week, D? Uh, huh? <laughs> One more time. One more time. What your 10% was this week, D? <laughs> I'm just the messenger. I, I, well, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> now, like I said, until we all wants to share the information, what is you up over here for? Okay, all right, all right. Uh, I'm the one I got to spend all day counting it. And oh, okay. by the way, let me tell you something. It don't take all day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm through counting the money in five minutes. Mm-mm. 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 Can the one and all yeah, that? Yeah. Quit uh-huh. sending in all these sis. I can <laughs> ones and I'm moving decimal. Uh, okay, uh, now here's one for you, Pastor. I don't know how you're going to feel about this. Uh, President Trump wants to speak at the church this coming he Sunday. He's not bringing his ass down here. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> He's not speaking at this church right now. Not at the JPJJ. Not at the jackpot. We're uh, not well, having t- him up in here. We ain't okay. the shoe shine black folk he used to going around. We not doing okay. that. All, All them right. black just in want the studio to, but, just dancing when he up on stage. Trump ain't yeah. did nothing for us. Right. But I want to let you know, he did say he was going to bless the congregation with a $100,000 donation. Uh, he can come to the park. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. <laughs> not, <laughs> He come to the parking lot. He, come to the park lot. <laughs> he can get out the limo, open up the sunroof, stand on the seat, say what he got to say, and move your ass home. But we're going to need a hundred for you saying it. Thousand? <laughs> now, if he come in here with a million dollars, he can wear my robe. <laughs> <laughs> you good? You good? Sit a seat. <laughs> A mess, a mess. Uh, uh, moving along, Pastor. Uh, the Gospel Magazine, Holy Rollers, wants to do a story on you. Uh, oh, they asked, nice. do you mind discussing where you got all your nice cars and big house, and supposedly you've been seen shopping for a plane, and uh, the congregation's just not hearing about a plane. You want to explain uh, how you, you paying plane? for these items? I, I want to clear this up right now. <laughs> I'm not shopping for a plane. I'm following in the footsteps of uh, of Minister Dollar. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm asking each one of my congregation members worldwide Mm. to donate a thousand dollars. A thousand? A a, a what? I'm asking all of my (laughs) congregation members worldwide to donate a thousand dollars. You out your rabbit. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On that I don't note, think I'm going to get uh, enough for a plane. <laughs> On that note, we're going to be charting for a while. <laughs> in church complaints, uh, coming up at the top of the hour. <laughs> uh, entertainment and national mm. news right after this. Uh. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All of us continue to mourn the shocking passing of 43-year-old Chadwick Boseman. Uh, On this past Friday, Chadwick Boseman's family released a statement saying, it is with immeasurable grief that we confirm the tragic loss, the passing of Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer back in 2016 and battled with it these last four years as it progressed to stage four. The statement went on to say it was the honor of his career to bring King T'Challa to life in Black Panther. He died in his home, surrounded by his wife and family. They were by his side. Um, Other historical and iconic roles that Chadwick played included James Brown. Whoa. um, 
fantastic as yeah. James Brown. Oh, Jackie Robinson, yes. of course. Yeah. Outstanding. And yes, outstanding. Mm-hmm. Burger from the King, Marshall. really good. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Drew mm-hmm. Marshall. Uh, we also know that Chadwick was a proud graduate of Howard University, uh, celebrities and athletes from Denzel Washington, who actually paid for for Chadwick to go to school. Uh, he paid for, I, I mean, at the behest wow. of Felicia Richard. Yeah, and he didn't even know at the time, Felicia Richard, he didn't even know at the time Chadwick got a chance to thank him. I think it was at the New York premiere of uh, Black Panther, and he called him the dopest actor on the planet. He was that. He was that. <laughs> he, he, was he, that. he said that about his mentor, Denzel. And, um, I mean, Kevin Hart had nice things to say. Samuel L. Jackson, Viola Davis, Angela Bassett, who was in the movie, played his mom in Black Panther. Jamie Foxx, uh, Ryan Coogler, who was the director of Black Panther, and, of course, Steve Harvey. Wow. Uh, the, the, I mean, everyone is just heartbroken over this. Talk about gone too soon. Denzel described Chadwick as a gentle soul, and he also said that when he was at the premiere for Black Panther, he actually went to get his money, get his money back. He had, <laughs> <laughs> he you for Chadwick, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to go to you school. Ain't. Can't say you yeah. made a bunch of hits, dog. Yeah, but you know, he uh, he 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 was impactful. Oh, and, yeah, and short I mean, way time. too short of a career, yeah. but the stuff he did was mm-hmm. incredibly impactful. It's so sad, man, but it's just like, I mean, we got to get, look, man, these colonoscopies mm-hmm. are important in our community. They're moving to age. It's time for me to go back and get another one, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because I got mine probably seven years ago. You need to get them every five. Might have got it eight. I don't even know. But I got to go back now, man. And, you know, okay. we got, look, man, these you procedures stay on top are. Of that. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Just got to stay on top of it, man. What a great dude. But you, you see, you're not even supposed to go get him checked until you're 50. Mm-hmm. So he he didn't even, he hadn't even got to the colonoscopy age. Yeah. Right. So by the right. time when they discovered it, it was stage three. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's not he like he was it. neglecting his health or anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they don't even recommend you go until you're 50. But they said they were going to move the date up. But. If he'd been battling it for for, mm-hmm. for four years, yeah, he probably had Steve, it when he was thirty nine. You know, he was it's doing movies between going to get chemo oh, no. and operation. Oh, this, this dude's bad, man. Yes, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was awesome. A I, I mean, talk superhero. about a fighter and a real superhero. Um, last night, ABC honored Chadwick by airing the Black Panther uh, commercial free. And then it was followed by an ABC News special, Chadwick Boltzmann, a tribute for a king. A homeboy, a Columbia, South Carolina. Man. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Jay. Mm-hmm. That's right. All right, Steve, time for the latest on today's headlines. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, everybody. Good morning. A homicide investigation is underway in Portland, Oregon, after a man was shot and killed Saturday night during clashes between anti-racism protesters and a pro-Trump, pro-police group. The victim not identified yet. No arrests have been made. However, photos show that the guy was wearing a thin blue line patch on his shorts and a hat from a local right-wing group calling itself Patriot Prayer, a group that has been uh, coming to Portland, a witness say, to demonstrate and allegedly engage in violence. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler says he's tired of the violence, especially though the person he says is responsible for it, President Trump. It's you who have created the hate and the division. It's you who have not found a way to say the names of black people killed by police officers, even as people in law enforcement have. And it's you who claimed that white supremacists are good people. You've tried to divide us more than any other figure in modern history. And now you want me to stop the violence that you helped create. That was the mayor of Portland, Ted Wheeler. Meanwhile, the streets of Kenosha, Wisconsin, were calm for a fifth straight night last night where protesters chanted, Jacob Blake, Jacob Blake, the name of the young black man shot by a policeman seven times in the back, paralyzed and still fighting for life. President Trump, by the way, promising to visit Kenosha this week. However, the mayor there, John Antaramian, uh, tells NPR that any presidential visit is fine, but just not right now. By the way, the local police chief is insisting that his officers did nothing wrong in being friendly to the 17-year-old white man who came to Kenosha armed 
and who then allegedly shot three anti-racist protesters, two of them fatally. Kyle Rittenhouse is charged with first-degree intentional homicide. Congressional Democrats say they're outraged by the Trump administration's decision not to provide face-to-face -face intelligence briefings to legislators about how foreign powers are trying to once again subvert our democracy. The national head of intelligence, John Ratcliffe, says from now on he'll only provide written reports. Democrats say this is a violation of the administration's constitutional responsibility to keep the Congress informed. Intelligence officials already announced that Russia is already working to harm Joe Biden's presidential bid. Finally, and so sadly, Mr. Jackie Robinson, Mr. Black Panther, Mr. James Brown and others has left us too soon. Actor Chadwick Aaron Bozeman died uh, from Anderson, South Carolina, died Friday after losing a four-year battle against colon cancer. Among his great roles, Get On Up, Marshall, and Black Panther. I am not king of all people. I am king of Wakanda. Actor Chadwick Bozeman was 43 years old. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We have to say, Steve, congratulations to our very own Jay Anthony Brown. <laughs> uh -oh, Jay, uh -oh. you've been talking yeah. about it for a while. Yeah. You are yeah. one of the stars <laughs> of Tyler Perry's brand new TV show. It's called Tyler Perry's Assisted Living. And what Jay, a, congratulations. What, what a blessing to have that part, you know, in the way I got it. Yeah. You got to tell Perry. us about it. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The show's called Assisted Living. The premise mm -hmm. of the show is my wife dies. Leaves you play me some Vinny, money. right? You I play, play Vinny. I play uh -huh. the part of Vinny. My wife dies, leaves me some money to give to my grandson, oh, who's played okay. by Naheem Lynn, uh, David and Tamla Manor on the show, Courtney Nichols, yes. Tyler Buck, mm -hmm. and Alex uh, Henderson. Mm -hmm. He passes away. I'm supposed to give the money to my grandson. When he shows up, I bought this old rundown retirement home. <laughs> he blew the money, he though. He don't get none of the money. He don't get... <laughs> oh, that's cold. You spent your grandson's it's, it's, money? I spent it all. And to offset my income, I'm growing uh -huh. weed in the backyard. <laughs> 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 you ain't even seen it in this funny, right? It's just a little <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just and, hilarious. And we know you. <laughs> it comes on this Wednesday night. Also, uh, I have a fake hook hand to get more money from disability. And you can see that this hand is not a real hook hand. It's, 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 I love it. <laughs> and it's a lot Vinny of fun. Vinny is your character. Vinny is my uh -huh. character. I'm playing, I play Vinny, Grandpa Vinny. And it's just, it was a lot of fun to work with David Mann on this show. And Congratulations, And everybody Jay. else. Oh, good. No, so Vinny yeah. getting into it with Mr. Brown. Oh, all constantly. It's nonstop. <laughs> it's not, no, I'm his Aunt Esther. Esther. That's who I am. <laughs> nonstop. Non but when you see that hook, you're like, that is not a real thing. <laughs> Who came up with the, with the idea for the So, Mr., uh, Mr. Perry came up with the idea oh, of to he? do the show. You know, it was just a great concept. And the stuff you can say that he put, he was, Steve, you've been on these shows where they're giving you lines to say, mm -hmm. and Mr. Perry would give you these lines. I'm like, I can say that? Okay. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Did you ad-lib anything? Oh, a lot of ad-libbing. A lot of ad-libbing. Of think my course. One, one line I did was about uh, <laughs> Kurt Franklin. <laughs> I said Kurt Franklin was... God little is Christian. Uh -huh. And Mr. Perry had never heard me say that before. I say you're so small you can wear him around your neck. He said, We're leaving it in. We leaving it in. <laughs> <laughs> so come on this Wednesday, y'all check it out on BET. Hey, what's up, baby? Congratulations. Congratulations. Go get it, go Jay. get it. <laughs> check it out, Tyler Perry's Assistant Living Wednesday, September 2nd at 9. Two shows. 8 Central <laughs> on BET. All right, thank you, Jay, so much. We're going to switch gears, talk more about the loss of the great Chadwick Boseman and colon cancer in the African-American wow. community right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so, Steve, earlier we talked about how we are still mourning the loss of Chadwick Boseman, of course, a few years back. Um, you had a chance to interview Chadwick about some of his iconic movie roles. Take a listen. What's in life? seeing everybody's reaction to the comic con trailer it was like i imagine a michael jackson concert was like it's yeah. like that people were crying people were they were laughing lost complete control even i was crying but it literally it literally was like a concert experience this new film marshall man explain what it is exactly well, it's like a, a superhero origin film of Thurgood Marshall, because he hasn't, 
he hasn't gotten to do the things you know he will do. Yeah. And so he's the marshal, play on the word marshal, coming into town to implement justice. So it's like a Western whodunit slash buddy cop film, and it's a feel-good experience at the same time. Yeah. There's a fight scene in the movie. Right. And you square up like a boxer, man. Are you a boxing fan? Did you take lessons? I love boxing, practicing myself. You know, that's me at the Mayweather fight recently. Jamie Foxx, Nas, um, Puff. I love boxing. Did you see the reaction you got from those guys? From, from Jamie, from oh, Nas, yes. from Puff? Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. amazing, man. I don't know if you understand how a lot of people feel about you. Wow. Mm. Man. Bad boy right there, man. Man, Steve, you I've been... You're the legend, Steve. Yeah, Bad I went to Comic-Con, and, and when he came out, it, it's, it's unbelievable the way they reacted mm. to that character, mm. man. Mm. It's like just... Him. It's unbelievable. He's mm. right. It's bigger than a Michael Jackson man. concert. Yeah. Bigger, you know. Mm. Special dude. Man. Yeah, that was good for him, man. Good. Wow. Prayers uh, for his family. And what his a wife. shock. What a yeah, shock. three years old. Yeah. such a shocker. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, wow, he lost his private battle, um, Chadwick Boseman did, to colon cancer. And did you all know that, um, I think we talked about this earlier too, Steve, that uh, colon cancer is the third deadliest cancer among men and women in the U.S.? It's after lung cancer in men and breast cancer wow. in women. Wow. They won't go. Mm. Black men yeah. need to go to yeah. the doctor. Yeah. And African Americans, of course, are at greater risk of right. colon cancer. And the American Cancer Society recommends regular screening of colon cancer at the age of 45. 45. Right. right. Go yeah, and move 40. it up. It used to go be to 50. 40, man. Well, I mean, you know, they ain't going to hurt, right? They, it's it's well, really, really they rare. They're going to pay for it, the insurance. You know, I mean, I mean, it's really, really rare, but it doesn't mean it can't happen. But, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, doctors don't even recommend that you get a colonoscopy and now until you're 45. It was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now the, the Cancer Society, uh, American Cancer Society, said they were going to move it up to 45. But yeah. he, he died from it at 43, been battling it for four years. So he obviously had it at 39. 39. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, I mean, who would ever think it? It's not something that's very normal at all you know it could be you family history you don't you know from yeah, his family you, know. you don't you don't know i mean i've had two colonoscopies i had to, mm -hmm. I, I had one in my mid-40s and i had one at 50 steve you had one i um, have one yeah. shirley's had one mm -hmm. shirley you called me when you got ready to do yours we talked yeah. about it how yeah. important it was yeah i need to go get one just for the weight loss yeah <laughs> <laughs> it flushes you. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy, you've you had have one? to drink. Yeah, yeah I've had one. Well, day before. Well, let me tell you something. Jay, you've had one? I've done my own. before. Uh, Jay. Okay. Jay. This fool. Jay, did you just... You have a kit that you can get. You can do your own. Oh, yeah, I've seen that commercial. Oh, I thought yeah. you were doing no, 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 like no, Tommy no, no. does his own <laughs> prostate no, no. checks and, it's a box. you know, all of that. Okay. <laughs> you, oh, you are no. I've seen Tommy. that commercial. No, no. But we, I mean, we, we're trying to bring awareness mm -hmm. at the same yeah. time. And yeah. <sighs> cancer, man. Cancer. Yeah. yeah. So can, the American the Cancer Society, again, recommends regular screening for colon cancer at the age of 45. Yeah, we, we lost a great yeah. one in, in right. Chadwick. Don't be missed. He will always be our king. He will. Yeah. Rest in peace, Chadwick Bozeman. In Wakanda forever. Coming up next, um, again, we'll try to laugh a little bit. Uh, nephew will be here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after today's strawberry letter, my subject, please don't bring any food to the cookout. Mm. Wait a minute. Is this to me? <laughs> it should be. It should be. Maybe. Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> it should be. Now. You do know that. You done wrote your own Please strawberry letter, Shirley. Did you write a strawberry letter, Shirley? Please don't bring any food to the cookout. Okay, well, we'll find out. That's for sure. You bring uh, ice and cups. That's what you do. <laughs> right now, it is the nephew's turn to give us today's prank phone call. What you got, Neff? I need a reference. I need a reference. I like it. 
I'll give you one. Okay. Haven't uh-huh. heard it in a like uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. Tell him to call right. me. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm calling for a reference. Let's go, cat dog. Yeah. Watch this. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to reach Scotty, please. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Hey, 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 Scotty, how you doing, man? I'm trying to actually get a uh, uh-huh. a reference for for Monica. Monica? Oh, you talking about Monica? My my ex wife? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to get a reference uh, on her if possible. Oh, okay. So was she applying for a job? She trying to go to work now? Uh, no. This reference is actually for like a relationship. Uh, a relationship. Say, say, hold up, hold up, oh boy. Wait a minute. Relationship? You you talking about a job relationship? No, 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 no. See, what what this here is is that I'm I'm finna actually start dating Monica on the regular. And I'm calling you for a reference. Whoa, 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 get... whoa, whoa, homeboy, hold up. Wait a minute. Who, who did you say this is? And how you get my number? My name's Philip, man. My name's Philip. I got your number out of Monica's phone. Check this out, Phil. You don't need to call me with Whatever you and Monica got going on, y'all need to go on and deal with that. No, 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 no. I, I got that, brother. Hear me out, though. Hear me out. What I'm trying to say is, is that I figured if I could get a reference and figure out what kind of person she is and get get a you know kind of get a background so you can kind of tell me what kind of person her good points or bad qualities the whole night see it might save me some time from being in a long relationship if i know what to look for what's good say, and what's bad say say homeboy homeboy i know i know i'm not listening to this i was married 12 years ain't nobody give me no rest so don't call me asking for no like that if you got number for Monica. You and Monica need to forget my Okay, okay but hold up, okay. hold up, bro. Like I say, man, I'm just trying to Ain't figure no out... The, hold the, up. I'm trying to figure out the good qualities and bad qualities. Like, you know, do she want to cook? You know, is she good in the bedroom? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to know... I'm trying to just know... What to look for, dog? That's all, man. I ain't trying to come at you, man. Mind. Look, oh, but I just can't believe calling another about some. I don't have her no more. Only thing I have to deal with is my child. You know what I'm saying? And you most definitely don't need to be around. Now, say, dude, I got to go. Okay, okay, okay. But can you give me a good reference on it? That's all I'm trying to get say, out of you. Man, the, re- the reference is don't die number ever again and when i talk to monica me and her but hey you ain't gonna have to worry about a relationship with monica you know what i'm saying okay 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 hold up man let me go and break this to you first of all me and monica then dated for, for the last year off and on we just finna get serious whoa, 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 hold, up, hold up dude the last year me and this woman just got a divorce a few months ago oh so you that who must have messed up my Hey, no, man, no, 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 I look, look, I ain't calling. That's the reason why y'all broke up. I don't, I don't have nothing to do with that. I don't hey, have man, nothing to do look with that. Look here. Oh, so you that slick say, hey, mate, why don't you slide your little slick back under that rock that you slid for month? Hey, 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 dog, I can slide right on back under the rock you talking about. But what I'm trying to ask you is this right here, man. Hey, dog, can you just give her brother some references, man? Something I can look out for, some signs that, that she's going to start tripping. The reference I'm going to give you is when you don't have enough money. When she want that $1,200 bag, don't call me for that. When she needs some more money for this, oh, well, baby, I just gave you my check. What the don't mean nothing. And or you pull up your bank account, ain't no money in that. That's the reference your need. Ain't I need to hear from you. Especially if you who was around with my wife while, while we was married. Talking about married. Hold up. The reference is I'm going to find your I'm going to call Monica, and I'm going to track down. Then, yeah, give you a reference. Then, yeah, yeah, I'll give you a reference then, face-to-face. Hey, dog, I ain't trying to have no altercation with you, man. Oh, boy, you must have been trying to have something. You dialing my number. Okay, okay dog, let me, okay, one more question, man, and then I'm going to be out your house. I just, like I said, I just wanted a few things and know some background on them. Man, you, you out of questions, homeboy. You out of questions. Okay, but this, this I just need to know this because I want everything. Hey man, I want everything to run smooth, dog. And I want us to have a good understanding. Do you have a problem, man, with, with, with your little girl calling me daddy? What the did you just ask? You asked me about my daughter. Hey, 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 calm down, dude. Calm. I'm calm as I'm gonna be. You asked about mine. This about mine. Hey, dog. I'm just I asking nigga here. You around? Child, I will come and. Homeboy, look, I'm gonna find because you a bad. You missed the bad. You dial number. Not only you got that, but man, you talking about child. I'm just asking, do you mind if she called hey, me daddy? Homeboy, homeboy, look here, man. That child there, her name 
cannot come out your mouth. You hear what I'm saying? Say, man, this shit, man, I, I, don't, I don't have time for it. I'm going to call that Monica, and I'm going to get your Yeah, I'm going to get you. I'm out of here. You want Why is you calling me back? Scotty, 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 I'm telling you, man, you look at why are I'm you trying to tell you, I'm just back, trying to man. tell you something. Homeboy, you don't have nothing to tell me, homie. No, I want to say, Scott, Scotty, look, just listen to me, man. I want to say this. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your brother Brian got me to prank phone call you. Hey, man, it's who? It's <laughs> Scotty, Scotty, this is Tommy, man. Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your brother Brian got me to prank phone call you. Say, man. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm about to go, man. Hey, dude, I'm about to go ballistic over here, man. <laughs> hey, Brian got one coming, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. You all right, man? Yeah, yeah. Say, man. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Tommy, man, I, boy, I, I, hey, I, I'm glad you were playing, man, because <laughs> talking about my little girl, oh, boy, Brian, no, it, it's it's going to be on in his world, man, I was going to, dude, Brian, Brian gonna got you, man, he got you good, dog. Hey, man, one more thing, man, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Man, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> Come on, man. Come Give on, me man. some. Give me some, man. He never baby. did answer the question, though. He didn't answer the question. Shut up, Jay. He didn't answer the question. If he, I didn't get the reference. Call him daddy. That's the main question. Man. It was too much. Don't leave that out. Let me tell you something. From the what? moment he picked up the phone, uh -huh. he was not the he was yeah. not the dude to call. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nothing, dog. Oh. He didn't yeah, want to I just hear. need to know if it's okay. When <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm about to go, I was about to go ballistic. Yeah, like, weren't you already there? No, no, no. No, ladies, ladies. He got another level. It's another level after that. Really? No, oh, oh, yeah. That dude got You're right. You're right. Dog, that dude right there, as soon as he find out who, where you at, dog, he got a whole nother level. Because there's some stuff on him. Yeah. Oh, oh you the oh you the. Oh, okay. uh, the, the okay. everything took him up to a different level. Every he went oh, level, yeah. level, 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 piece level. Piece by piece. Right. <laughs> so, no, that, well, when you capped it off, you talking about his daughter. Oh, you yeah. Your little girl called me dad. Let's go for the big button. Hit it. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was a good one. That Coming up next, one. my strawberry letter. Please don't bring any food to the cookout. I'm a little Shirley. offended. Shirley. <laughs> he did not say that, but I am offended. We're begging uh, you. Don't bring nothing. <laughs> we'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 63 days until the November 3rd election. Please go right now to... Register to vote at vote.org. It's easier and it's even better, okay? You can get hmm. your dates as to when you can vote early in your state. So please go to vote.org. Mm -hmm. It's simple. It's clean. Vote.org. 63 days. All right? Time now for my strawberry letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the Hop air. Hop it, <laughs> That's for you, Jay. <laughs> live on the air, just like we're going to do this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is. Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, please don't bring any food to the cookout. Sure. 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 I hate all of you. <laughs> Dear Stephen Shirley, except Carla, I am a 33-year-old entrepreneur, and I need your advice because Labor Day is coming soon. I live in a nice, big neighborhood, and I'm friends with everyone on my block. We're a close-knit community, and each year we have a community outing for Labor Day at the Neighborhood Clubhouse. Last year, I took two big watermelons, some ice, and two cases of soda. Since I'm a bachelor, I'm not expected to do much more than that. 
We send around a checklist annually so we'll know who's bringing what to the party. My next door neighbors always bring the cups, plasticware, and paper towels each year. But this year, they signed up to bring the potato salad and homemade coleslaw. First of all, everyone in the neighborhood knows they have the nastiest house on the block. They have three dogs that have free reign in the house. Their carpet is disgusting, and I would never eat anything they cooked. When I go over to have a drink with the man of the house, we either sit in the garage or out back. I haven't been able to sit in their house for any period of time because of the pets. Everyone feels the same as I do, but we are all afraid to tell the couple. I told the wife that it's probably going to be too hot for the salads to stay outside, and she said she plans to keep them in the cooler, covered up. If we avoid eating their salads, it will be noticeable, and we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. I feel bad about talking about them behind their backs, but this could be a bad situation for us and for them. For them, Labor Day is um, always a memorable weekend, and I can't have barbecue without potato salad. I need advice on how to tell them before it becomes a big mess. Uh, it, it, is it best to come right out and say it? Please advise. Sounds like it's already a big mess, okay? Uh, and yeah, it's best to come right out and say it, but you just got to be nice about it. I mean, I just say if the nasty neighbors bring the food, do not eat the food. You can't eat this food. The nastiest house in the block? No, you can't do it. That's it, period. Don't eat the food. I suggest you bring your own since you can't eat barbecue, you say, without potato salad. Um, do you have someone in your family or friend or something that can make good, clean house potato salad? Um I, I think you need to contact them and just bring the stuff, ask them to, to do you a solid, take it with you, and eat it with your meal. Uh, if they ask you, just tell them your friend made it. No other explanation necessary. This is not a major issue to me. Uh, I think you can handle this potato salad situation. I understand you don't want to hurt their feelings or anything, but um, you don't want to eat their, their, their potato salad and their homemade coleslaw either. So that's the choice you have to make. I just say have somebody else make it and just act like, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's been there all the time or something. You can handle this. Steve? We all, at some point in our life, have dealt with this. This ain't the time to be neighborly. <laughs> this time to be real. Uh-oh. <laughs> they live in a nice big neighborhood. He friends with everybody on the block. Mm, mm, mm. Close knit community got block watch everything. Block watch. They got housing associated. Everybody cool. Mm -hmm. They have a community outing on Labor Day at the neighborhood clubhouse. Oh, I know this community well. <laughs> Last year, I took two big watermelons, ice, and two cases of soda. These is black people. Oh. Yeah, because the potato salad has to be right. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. <laughs> that ain't why. Because the single dude showed up with two damn watermelons, two cases of soda, and some ice. And they let him get away with that. Because black people know this all you supposed to bring, sweetie. You you can't cook. Mm. See, that's how I analyze this right here. Mm. So now, we so we do a checklist so we know who's bringing everything. Now, normally they next door neighbors just bring the plastic wear paper towels. But this year, they signed up to bring the potato salad and homemade coleslaw. And everybody in the neighborhood know they got the nastiest house in the block. All right, let's put the brakes on this right here. Erk. You must release this information. Someone has already made the potato salad. Damn it, I know it's August. Wait, but what? someone has already made the potato salad for Labor Day even though it's still August. Oh, uh-huh. Okay, I got you. The potato salad and coleslaw is already made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, 
It's been handled. Yes. <laughs> Someone <laughs> has committed to this. But your nasty ass can't bring no food. Everything you bring got to be wrapped up. Forks, <laughs> knives, napkins. Cups. Hold on, Steve. We'll have part two of Steve's response Why is coming up. Why they nasty? Ass? At 23 minutes after the hour. Uh, subject, please don't bring any food to the cookout. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter and see it wasn't about me after all. Subject, please don't bring any food to the no, cookout. No, the only reason it ain't you, Shirley, because they nasty. Oh, yeah, although I have heard nasty, those words. So, no, now, here nasty. we go. The close-knit community, little single dude, go down there every year, take a couple of wild melons, ice, a couple of queso. He a bastard. Don't nobody expect him to do no more than that. And they sit around a checklist, Everybody, what everybody going to bring to the party. They're his neighbors, nasty. And and they always bring paperware, plasticware, paper towels, cups, stuff that's wrapped this year, they signed up to bring a potato salad and a homemade coleslaw. Everybody in the neighborhood know they got the nastiest house on the block. They got three dogs, got free reign. Their carpet is disgusting. I would never eat anything they cook. Then why is y'all letting them bring homemade potato salad and coleslaw? It's too many damn things can go in there. It's just too many damn things. <laughs> Like the dogs. You know, dogs in there. You could drop oh. stuff in there. There's too many ingredients in there. You know. <laughs> you don't know what you're eating. <laughs> you know, you, you, and, and this is all, and I see y'all at these yearly events. Uh-huh. We can't run the risk of somebody messing up a yearly event. That's why you don't go to people's house that can't cook on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving comes once a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you go over nobody's house taking chances, <laughs> trying nothing out. <laughs> oh, I made I made a new sweet potato dish and it ain't yams. What? <laughs> you know, you, you say you, what? You make, dog, I made I a new sweet it. potato dish and it ain't yams. Well, what is it? <laughs> well, damn it, it's Thanksgiving. Why ain't they yams? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Been waiting all year on this here. What is you talking about? Mm-mm. Yeah, mm-mm, mm-mm. I do them. I just cut them up in quarters. You ought to see it. It's so pretty. You cut the sweet potatoes up in quarters. Mm-hmm. And do what? Boil them. And? Okay. Uh-huh. And what? Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-mm, yeah. I can't tell y'all. Wait till you see this. <laughs> can't take no chance. How does it taste? Everybody feel the same as he does, but they are afraid to tell the couple. Then what he tried to do was he tried to tell a nasty lady, probably going to be too hot for the salads to stay outside. She said, we're going to keep them in the cooler, covered up. So now, that's why you ain't got to eat none, because they're going to be in the cooler, covered up. Just let everybody know what cooler they in. That's it. That's a good one. You know, I didn't even see these, you Mm -hmm. know, Mm -hmm. and let them take it on back. It's going to be noticeable, and we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Look, you got to hurt people. (laughs) Wait, that's your response? What? That's your advice? (laughs) You got to. You have to hurt people. (laughs) Stop playing. This ain't the time to be neighborly. You got to hurt these people. Somebody got to take a spoon of it and go, what the hell? (laughs) (laughs) Ow, hell no. What is that? I know you good hell well. That ain't no damn potato salad. He just spit it out. <laughs> yeah, he spit see, it out. See, you got to hurt some people. Oh, And then man. I feel bad talking about them behind their back. But this could be a bad situation for us and them. Mostly for y'all. They going to eat it because they ain't going to know it's bad. See, nasty people don't really know they nasty. There you go. I know, See, they don't. if you ever go in somebody's house yeah. that got a lot of dogs and you smell their dogs, they don't smell their dogs. No. Mm-hmm. They're immune no. to it. Labor yeah. Day is always a memorable weekend. It's going to be even more memorable because you <laughs> now, hold on. First of all, let me explain something, y'all, about this neighborhood. Now, you're going to mess around and bring this bad-ass potato salad and coleslaw down here. Mm-hmm. Now, we already coming down here might get COVID. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Oh, now I your ass think we're going to get food <laughs> right. poisoning, too? And, mm. and and let me tell you something. COVID got the same symptoms as as uh, bad, uh, uh, bad potato salad. <laughs> so you gonna misdiagnose yourself? You know, your stomach, <laughs> diarrhea, 
<laughs> Stuffy head. Because when you eat bad food, your head clog up. Mm-hmm. Now, you're mm-hmm. going to be coughing, choking. The whole damn, the whole damn neighborhood going to think they got COVID. And it's all because wow. y'all let these nasty-ass people bring them potato salad up in here. Don't do it. Don't do it. Now, listen to me. I need advice on how to tell them before it comes a big mess. Just go on over there and say, hey, look, man, ain't nobody saying nothing to y'all. I'm going to bring it to y'all's attention. They really, really enjoyed the plastic cups and stuff. Right <laughs> right. You enjoyed it. I mean, man, you always I mean, start I mean, with something I mean, nice I mean, first. I mean, man, look, yeah. they, everybody been saying, man, if they don't bring the ones they bring, we don't even know where to get them. We don't even know where to y'all bring the best plastic <laughs> and forks. And for you to deny us that, and you know everybody got to, everybody don't eat potato salad and coleslaw, <laughs> but everybody use y'all plastic well. Mm-hmm. Why would y'all do this to us? And a lot of neighbors is hurt because you all are also <laughs> taking away an opportunity. Because Miss Sylvia wanted to make the uh, uh, coleslaw, and you don't even know this, but she got, you know. What? She she got a uh, pre-existing condition. She might not be here next Labor Day. <laughs> Let her make this potato salad and stuff because it could be her last one. <laughs> All know. right, Steve. <laughs> hold Thank up, hold you. up. Sure, sure. Wait, wait, wait. And do this in Jesus' name. <laughs> Post your comments on today's Strawberry here. Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram yeah. and Facebook. Ah. Uh, and don't forget to check out the, par- uh, the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, Junior Sports Talk. Yes, yes, yes. We are here for it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time for Sports Talk with Junior. Yeah, <laughs> let's yes, get right into got it, Junior. NBA playoff basketball. We're getting into the second round. Mm-hmm. But uh, first, man, you know, uh, it was honorable for LeBron James to honor Chadwick Boseman on Saturday night when he took a knee before the national anthem and did the Wakanda Forever sign wow. as respect mm-hmm. to Chadwick Boseman. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, man, uh, you know, the great thing about working television with Uncle Steve is you get to meet so many people, man. And just yeah, they told us not too, to even yeah. go in there and talk to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You we right. talked to Me and Jay went talk back to there him. And, anyway. and it didn't help y'all to Chadwick tell us not Bro. to go down there because we was going anyway. Yeah, we, they, we was mm-hmm. going down there. We knew he hey, was going to be on the show. Stop shelf. saying I told y'all not to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say you didn't tell no, us. No, we never said You know said who you. told us? No. <laughs> y'all don't bother Chadwick. He's going to be in the building today. Well, me and Jay went right down there and bothered Chadwick. I'm we went man. right who, down who there. Who told y'all that? I'm going to go on and ask. Who told y'all that? Don't worry about it. They all gone. <laughs> NBC going through some things right now. But man, it was such an honor, man, to meet him, man. Yeah. And uh, you know, for, yeah. for legend James iconic. That, mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's just, it just shows the impact he had, man. I walked yeah. right in the dressing room and threw my arms over my chest. He did it right back. No hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Chadwick hugged you right yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I mean, That's man, so I cool, did the kind of sign too, and he did it right back, man. I mean, he was just that humble of a dude, mm-hmm. man. He was just a really great spirit. And man, it just, you know, we, we had a lot of fun. Man. It was just a lot of fun. Yeah. So we just, we're all heartbroken. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah Wakanda yeah. forever, man. Yeah. King T'Challa. Yeah. yeah. And you know what, Jay? Today is uh, National South Carolina Day. Did you know that? Yeah, and the it, flags are flying at half. Is it half mass? Half mass for half him. Mass, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Mayor, Mayor Benjamin oh, wow. is done. If they were flying at half mass, everybody would have on the suit. <laughs> yeah, you might be right. <laughs> you think? But what I was saying was they're gonna peti- They're trying to have a petition for a statue for that Jack would be Bozeman. great. Oh, that's yes. hot. Uh-huh. No, that would be great. Yeah. That would be wonderful. Take Better than them hillbillies. They have statues of riding them horses across there that was fighting for slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Steve. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you gonna bring I'm it right on back, ain't yeah. you? You got one in. Uh-huh. Well, South Carolina. Yeah. 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 So, man, we gonna miss so, him. Yeah, he's gonna be missing, well. man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, five yeah. Bloods. That's the last one I saw was Five mm-hmm. Bloods. That was his movie was Spike Lee. Like, what was in Spike store Lee, for yeah. him? What was next for him? You know what I mean? That we'll mm-hmm. never get to see. I mean, just yeah. might want, He might have one in the can. We don't know about Jack. He might have one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has uh, such an impact on kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, 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 man. So Everyone. we're gonna miss you, uh, Wakanda yeah. forever, yes. forever, Kinda come on, forever. That's it, Wakanda, Wakanda forever, Wakanda forever. Yes. <laughs> there it is. 
All right, Junior, thank you so much. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some music news from Carla right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Carla, you got Changes some music news for us? What you got? Steve, thing, your music bed. Been going through, yeah. missing you, Let's missing okay. you. Till you come back to me. <laughs> now we'll... <laughs> you know, I can't I can't do my voice like Luther, but I can do my lips like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh time now for Carla's music news, guys. What you got? All right, Carla? so tonight it is going down. 90s R&B Divas versus Battle Monica versus Woo-hoo! Brandy. Wow. This is yeah. like I got to put my money right on Brandy. Got to. Really? Got really? To. really? Put mine it's on go- Monica. Uh, I'm really? Going okay. Brandy. Yeah. yeah. And it's so hard you know, to pick. It's hard. Yeah, it's they tough to pick. They both good, though. They both are yes. good. Yeah, they're yeah. both just great. You know, there was always rumors that there was some kind of beef between Brandy and Monica, especially when they dropped the collabo that they did, the duet, The Boy Is Mine, Boy is mine. back in 19, what's about 1998. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So, these two R&B powerhouse singers, Timbaland, Swiss Beat, said it's time. It's time for Monica and Brandy to battle. It's going down, Steve, at Tyler Perry Studio. Wow. Going down to the oh, studios really? tonight. Really? Uh-huh. So, who you that. got? Now, some of y'all said Brandy. Some of y'all said Monica. I'm going with Brandy. It's hard. All yeah. right. Jay got Brandy. Uh. <sighs> So, Brandy, I want to be down, baby, best mm-hmm. friend, sitting up in my room. Have you nothing, ever? Nothing. All right, Ooh, Monica. Those are just hits. some of the hits. Some of the hits. Mm-hmm. Monica, don't take it personal. So go. That was my yeah. jail. You <laughs> know, Monica. <laughs> again, Carla, I again. Brandy. <laughs> so go. <laughs> I think What's Brandy the- had more hits. Right. But oh. Monica's voice. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I like oh, the smoothness it. of Brandy's too, though. Both yeah, oh, both of, yeah. both of them bad. Both of them bad. It's this a, is a hard this one. Torn. This but, is a hard one. Like but Monica Will could lean Erica. back and, and tell your mouth out sometimes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Brandy so was, I love you Brandy so much, smooth. Angel yeah, Brandy of Brandy mine. Right. Monica, uh-huh. before you walk out of my life, they got some hits, man. Yeah, they do. These women have some hits. I had questions on both of them, so I don't care. Yeah, I you could be crushes? rejected. I'm with you, Junior. I could be both rejected by both of them. Both of them. <laughs> Beautiful women. Beautiful. I don't care yeah, it's, it's, I got turned down by one. Uh-huh. Talk about. <laughs> yep, yep. So this it's going the hard down one. tonight versus TV or Apple TV. You know, everybody's going to talk about it on wow. social media, 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern how tonight. Do you, how do you go about doing the challenge? You just put it out there and. and just... Well, you know, this is Timbaland and Swiss mm-hmm. Beats. It's their thing. Mm-hmm. So they kind of come up with the suggestions and they may throw it out to their followers, Whoa. and to the music fans. Who would you like to see? Because, you like know, they, the they threw out not too long ago, mm-hmm. Steve, Anita Baker and Shot Day. Oh, Good my yeah. God. Oh, that mighty. Now, that oh, one right Jesus. there. Lord that would have been, would have been frightening. Whoa. <laughs> yes. Whoa. I would have been in there just crying. Erica, I do. That was yeah. crazy. Yeah, nah, that, was, that, ain't, that ain't sh- well. <laughs> Sade mm. and Anita Baker, though. Those, whoop, 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 Those whoop, are whoop, two whoop, different whoop, types. Whoop, yeah, you right. Yeah. yeah. You be sitting there holding yourself. <laughs> Yeah, boy, let me tell you something. Be up in there crying. I yes. know. Sucking your thumb. Yes, 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 yes. So that's how it goes down, Jay. They throw it out there okay. and see. Because I want to, I want to make a challenge. I want a challenge. Oh, Who are you gonna challenge him? Okay, you want to challenge Weird Al. I want him. I've been trying to contact Ooh, Weird, Weird Al. Weird Al. Yeah, Weird you got Al. some Weird hits Al. though, Jay. Yeah, I got, I got Ooh. some too. Uh, I know you I do. Got, I got, you got oh, I got my money hit. on Jay. Thank I got you. all I got my money on Jay. My weird ass Yankovic ass up. <laughs> Get it handy to me. Boy, let me tell you something. I will and tell I'm, you that. Right? Jay, I'm your damn DJ. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in the back. I'm your jazzy Jeff. You ain't even got to worry about that. And oh, dog, and we gonna talk trash and yeah. tell jokes. Oh, get out of here, Al. Al. Yeah, get out of here, Al. Just eat this, Al. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kyla. Always. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge uh, Shucky Ducky. <laughs> Coming up, more of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. We'll be back at about 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
The Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron said he received the FBI ballistics report from the fatal shooting of Breonna Taylor. Cameron tweeted, there is still additional analysis that must must take place. You guys will recall that uh, Kentucky's AG said that he needed that ballistics report before deciding if he would bring charges against the plain clothes Louisville cops who shot and killed Breonna Taylor. Daniel said, uh, also said that on Face the Nation, the report is not the end all to be all. And uh, there was still some witness testimony and interviews that have to be conducted. So they're full of it. He's so, full of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. He's the same guy that more. spoke at the mm-hmm. Republican National yes. Convention. Yeah, that was him. 33 yeah, him. years old, mm-hmm. young, young black guy. guy. He mm-hmm. made me sick. And let me explain something to you. <laughs> all you got to do is take every bullet that's in the wall and remove the bullets from the body. You take it, you take all the guns that was there that night. You look at the shells that were found at the scene. You fire those same police officers' guns into the water tank, and you match the bullets up. The bullets that's in the wall Mm -hmm. and in the body, they have a score on it that comes out of the chamber of a gun that's just like a fingerprint, no two of the same. And you'll know whose gun shot who. This don't take all these damn months. They get this done on 48 hours in 48 hours. And yes, they do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news coming up at 33 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, earlier we talked about how we are still mourning the loss of Chadwick Boseman, of course, a few years back. Um, You had a chance to interview Chadwick about some of his iconic movie roles. Take a listen. What's it like seeing everybody's reaction to the Comic-Con trailer? It was like, I imagine a Michael Jackson concert was like, it's like that. People were crying, people were, they were laughing, lost complete control, even I was crying. But it literally, it literally was like a concert experience. This new film, Marshall Man, explain what it is exactly. Well, it's like a, a superhero origin film of Thurgood Marshall, because he hasn't he hasn't gotten to do the things you know he will do. Yeah. And so he's the Marshall, play on the word Marshall, coming into town to implement justice. So it's like a Western who done it slash buddy cop film, and it's a feel-good experience at the same time. Yeah. There's a fight scene in the movie. Right. And you square up like a boxer, man. Are you a boxing fan? Did you take lessons? I love boxing, practicing myself. You know, that's me at the Mayweather fight recently. Jamie Foxx, Nas, um, Puff. I love boxing. Did you see the reaction you got from those guys? From Jamie, from oh, Nas, yes. from Puff. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. amazing, man. I don't know if you understand how a lot of people feel about you. <sighs> wow. Mm. Man. Man. Bad boy right there, man. Man, Steve, you I've been... You the legend, Steve. Yeah, man, I went to Comic-Con, and, and when he came out, it is, it's unbelievable the way they reacted mm. to that character, mm. man. Mm. It's like just... Him, it's man. unbelievable. He's right. It's... Bigger than a Michael Jackson man. concert. Yeah. Bigger, you know. Special dude. Yeah, that was good for him, man. Good. Wow. Prayers uh, for his family. And what, his a what a shock. What a shock. Yeah, three was, years old. Such, such a shocker. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, wow, he lost his private battle, um, Chadwick Boseman did, to colon cancer. And did you all know that, um, I think we talked about this earlier too, Steve, that uh, colon cancer is the third deadliest cancer among men and women in the U.S.? It's after lung cancer in men and breast cancer in women. Wow. They won't go. Black men need to go to the doctor. And African Americans, of course, are at greater risk of colon cancer. And the American Cancer Society recommends regular screening of colon cancer at the age of 45. 45. Right. Go and move it up. It used to go to 40, man. Well, I mean, you know, 
Yeah. They're going to hurt, right? They, it's it's well, really, really rare. It, Coming up, it's our last break of the day. It is the last break of the day. Let me tell you something. If you need toilet paper, I'm your man. I got what it. What Okay. Get it in. We'll also have some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey at 49 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, 63 days until November 3rd. Uh, That is the election day. You can register to vote at vote.org. It's just that simple. We've made it even simpler for you. Vote.org. Get your dates for early voting in your area. Register and be ready. We are going to early vote this year. Go to vote.org. We have 63 days left, Steve Harvey. Yes, we do. This is incredible, man. This thing is coming up on us fast. Mm -hmm. And this new uh, website that we've got that's even better, Mm -hmm. Mm vote.org, can help everybody know exactly when everything can happen. What's the last day you can register? What's the first day you can early vote? How you can vote by uh, sending your ballots in. You can mail in vote. You can early vote. How to vote at the polls where your polling station will be, everything. I am so loving this Black Lives Matter movement. I'm not loving the reason why, but I'm loving the movement. I'm loving the reaction to the why. See, we have a president that doesn't address these things right here because he really doesn't care. But we do. And in order for us to really drive the point home that black lives matter, we have to vote. If black lives matter, then our vote must matter too. See, if we really want them to pass policy, to make change in the black lives matter movement, the black lives must show up at the poll in unprecedented numbers to force them to bring about change and policy. See, everybody keep talking about what they gonna do for black people. You can demand whatever you want when you become a a block, a power block at the polls. Don't you understand that? You can demand whatever you want when you become a voting power block. Black Lives Matter is the beginning of something really, really huge here. With all the protests, with all the marching, with all the help from non-blacks, with all of the outrage we're seeing around the country in cities that's still protesting, with the statement that, uh, that sports teams are making. Listen, all of this can come to a head at the polls because They don't care that we marching. They really don't, man. Listen to me. They've seen this before. Now, they've never seen it at this magnitude with the social media behind it, and they haven't seen this magnitude of non-blacks behind it. So there is something special going on here. But they will really understand the depth and the breadth of it all if we make Black Lives Matter because our vote matters too. So if you really want your black life to matter, we got to show up at these polls. Because I'm telling you, man, they don't listen until you hit them in the pocket. They don't listen until you cause them to lose position and power. Position, power, and money is the driving force behind this country. Nothing else. Nothing else. That's why So many people are pulling and backing Trump because he represents their power and their position. The sad part of it is, is that there's so many Trump supporters. That's the sad part. That as much as I want to say this country is changing, it's disheartening to see all the Trump supporters with the flags and stuff because I, I don't, I don't, they're not even trying to understand when you watch Fox News, they make Black Lives Matter is a Marxist movement to cripple and socialize America. That ain't what it's about at all. That's not what it's about. So we got to show them what it's about. 
And the best way to show them is to do it at the polls. I'm telling y'all, man, we can't play around this time. This has to turn up at the polls. With all this marching and all this protesting, until we get them to change policy, until we force their hand to get better police training, a better process of dealing with the police and the way they handle people from our community, until we force their hand to get in that position right there, it's gonna continue. They just shot another brother. They shot him in the back. This was during the Black Lives Movement. You know, this thing is in full blast. And they managed to shoot this brother in his back seven times in spite of it. Not to mention the other ones that have happened since then. Mm. They don't listen, man. They don't listen because there ain't no consequences to their actions. Because the president is not pushing Black Lives Matter. He's pushing Blue Lives Matter. He's got the he's got the backing from the police organizations of New York and from other major cities. He's got the backing of the heads of the police departments because he's talking about Blue Lives Matter. See, we think Blue Lives Matter too, but see, black people ain't on no mission out. Black people ain't running around out here trying to kill police. We ain't got no problem with the police. We dial 911. We want some action just like you do. The problem we have is the police that you have that brutalize black people. Them the people we got a problem with. And that's the ones that ain't suffering no consequences. But until we get the right people in power, until we bring about law changes, and the only way to get the right people in power to bring about the laws that would affect us the most is we got to vote the ones that's in there out. And we can start at the top because he's creating more division than any other president in modern day time. Vote.org. We have got to get to the poll. If you want your black life to matter, your black life got to vote, period. Or else you really don't matter. And they're going to show you over and over and over again. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 